Intel has suffered some embarrassment. They accidentally published a document called Core Truth, which was clearly intended for internal consumption among Intel's salespeople, but sadly they posted it on their public facing website, and also they failed to cover it in those little logos that say for internal use only. The essence is that Intel is slinging mud at AMD, saying that AMD is carrying out dubious marketing, selling old chips as new products. And they're using the image of snake oil salesmen and dodgy second-hand car dealers. It's not the greatest look for Intel. But the thing is, they never expected us to see this document. Sadly, however, we have seen it. Tom's Hardware has seen it. Video Cards has seen it. And Gamers Nexus has seen it. Let's hear a moment or two of Steve's take on Intel's practices. Intel has completely lost its marbles. Their newest presentation contains the unhinged rantings of a company now resembling a deranged lunatic. Intel says that AMD is selling snake oil in its latest slide deck. It also has a photo of a greasy used car salesman peddling old as new. And somehow they're not talking about their own 14900K. Let's take a quick look at this short presentation and see what Intel's been up to. Core Truths, a playbook that enlightens customers on how the latest technology is not always what it seems. And the point is reiterated, why the latest doesn't always mean the latest. Snake oil salesman, that's not a good look. Used car salesman, also not a good look. And then we have direct comparisons. AMD Ryzen 5 against Intel Core i5. But which Ryzen 5 doesn't directly compete with an Intel Core i5? It turns out the Ryzen 5 7520U is built on dated Zen 2 architecture that was released in 2019. Whereas the Intel Core i5 1335U is based on the latest Raptor Lake technology from 2023. So one particular model of AMD Ryzen 5 would appear to be rather older than one particular model of Intel Core i5. Industry leaders are aware of this half-truth according to Intel and we have quotes from Ars Technica, The Verge, The Register, PC World over in the States and again Ars Technica. But we knew this at the start of 2023, nearly a full year ago. Indeed, Kit Guru said exactly this at CES 2023. Luke Hill for Kit Guru here. We're in the AMD booth. Let's take a tour. They've done a bunch of interesting stuff at CES 2023. So they've announced the new processors for the laptops, or the APUs, I should say. Here we have an interesting one, Lenovo IdeaPad 1. And what we're seeing here is the AMD Ryzen 3 7320U. So that too indicates Zen 2. So this is the, how do you say that, Mendocino? I'm gonna say Mendocino. And basically, it's gonna be, according to AMD, pretty reasonably priced, but pretty impressive for this caliber of laptop. So this is not your bargain basement, you know, chucking on the floor type laptop. It's gonna be a bit higher end than that, so perhaps a sensible, you know, university student laptop. Interestingly, Zen 2 with DDR5 technology, and this is actually using a six nanometer process node. So the product stack, if I'm being perfectly honest, looks like a complete and utter mess. I'm sure AMD won't appreciate me saying that, but as far as I'm concerned, that's the reality. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comment section down below. But there's a mix of four nanometer, I think five nanometer, six nanometer, seven nanometer, Zen 2, Zen 3, Zen 3 plus, Zen 4, RDNA 2, RDNA 3, XDNA, not XDNA, USB 4, USB 4 asterisk, not USB 4. Um, have I missed anything else out? Uh, probably milkshake and coffee. I, I don't know, I just, this is the shop in this. I'll throw the kitchen sink at it. To return to Intel's thesis, latest doesn't mean better. They probably mean latest doesn't necessarily mean better. After all, we would rather hope that latest does mean better. And then we read, while searching for comparable laptops online, John notices that 13th gen are the latest, so this is what he'll compare with. In his research, he also sees the latest AMD 7000 series, so he considers AMD's latest Gen 2. In this situation, latest doesn't always mean better performance or product experience. And on the next foil, be careful what you wish for. The Intel Core i5 and AMD 7000 series are both latest technologies, but Core i5-1335U is up to 83% better in performance than Ryzen 5 7520U. They really do have a thing for that particular Ryzen 5. So to reiterate, the Ryzen 5 7520U is built on dated Zen 2 architecture released in 2019. 
And when we look at AMD's horrendous decoder ring, we can see that 7520U does indeed mean year 2023, Ryzen 5, Zen 2 and a lower model within the segment, the U being lower power. But as you heard from Luke in that video, while the core technology is surprisingly old and we don't quite understand why they chose Zen 2, the fact is it's running DDR5 on a modern TSMC fabrication process. It's old technology but it's not an old chip. And then we move on to why according to Intel this matters. It's the children at school. If they don't have good laptops, they're all going to grow up stupid and this is bad, so we need to fix it. So once again, using as a base the AMD Ryzen 5 7520U and comparing to the Intel Core i3 N305, the Intel comes out better. And if you move up the stack and you choose the Ryzen 7 7730U, i.e. Zen 3, and you look at 12th gen Intel, they're better. And if you look at the 7735U and 7840U, well, once again, Intel just about has the beating. And so it follows. If you want beyond performance, you need Intel 13th gen cores, and that's all there is to it. That's the end of the argument. And this is reflected within benchmarks, particularly Sysmark 2025 from BAPCO. BAPCO, that sounds familiar. Let's have a little look at the BAPCO members, shall we? BAPCO members include, oh, no AMD, but oh look, Intel, hmm, that makes you wonder. The problem, of course, with Intel going on the attack in this manner is that they are on very shaky ground themselves. If we take the brand new, in inverted commas, 14th gen S series processors, they are, of course, heavily refreshed 13th gen processors. So far, we've only seen three models, 14900K, 14700K, 14600K, and it's only the 14700K that had a change over the 13th gen. It gained some E cores. The core configuration of both the Core i5 and Core i9 is unchanged, although the clock speeds have improved very slightly. But the idea that 14th gen is new compared to 13th gen is absolutely laughable. And that's the reason that Intel had to very carefully choose benchmarks to show the increase in performance for the new 14th gen over 13th gen, because the increase in performance was absolutely marginal. If we want to pick one other example from the past, going back to 2017, Intel criticized AMD for repurposing desktop products for server, and they said AMD Epic would suffer from inconsistent performance from glued together desktop dies. In actual fact, the chiplet approach has stood AMD in very good stead, and Epic has absolutely kicked Xeon all over the park. This criticism was entirely unfounded. So why, you may wonder, has Intel taken this extraordinary step to criticize AMD in such a shonky manner? And the answer has to surely be that they're concerned about AMD. Or perhaps they're concerned about their own product, the imminent Intel Core Ultra, or as we prefer to call it still, Meteor Lake. This is a very significant product family for Intel and it launches on December the 14th. We fully expect that Meteor Lake is going to be a very significant product at CES 2024, which is now only one month away. As we've covered in previous videos, there are a load of new features in Meteor Lake, in particular the AI side of things, and this is going to bear some heavy scrutiny. After all, we don't quite know what to expect from Meteor Lake. But we do know that Intel is promising a great many things, including a 3D performance hybrid architecture, which we discussed in a separate interview video with Intel when we were talking about ThreadDirect. The technology inside Meteor Lake looks very exciting. However, Moore's Law is Dead has recently done a number of videos saying that Meteor Lake has various issues, and his latest videos cite some Cinebench R23 scores. He says in his video that these figures have been very slightly reworked to hide the source of the data. However, he claims this information is accurate. The brand new Meteor Lake just about beats Raptor Lake up to 120 watts, and after that point, the two chips are pretty much tied. We don't expect Meteor Lake to operate beyond 120 watts, so the beyond that point is fairly irrelevant. But it would appear that in terms of straightforward CPU grunt, Meteor Lake is not looking all that promising. Clearly Intel is saying there's more to Meteor Lake than mere CPU performance, in particular AI, but they've also talked at great length about the graphics in Meteor Lake. Nonetheless, 
On the basis of this leaked chart, Intel has some concerns about Meteor Lake, and perhaps that is the reason why they're attacking AMD behind the scenes. While we find this Intel Core Truths briefing deck slightly silly, we also think it's best ignored. Instead, we're going to hurry up and wait for CES 2024 and our first chance to get hands on with brand new Meteor Lake laptops.